Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the Listings API video series. My name is Federico and I work as a solutions architect at Amazon Selling Partner Developer Services. In our previous episode, we covered the basics of listing on Amazon and how to achieve high quality listings. If you haven't watched it, I recommend you to do it before continuing with this video. In today's episode, we will introduce you the listings API and the functionality that it offers via 10 different building blocks. Let's get started. At a high level, what is the Selling Partner API for listings? It is a suite of API sections and notifications that enable selling partners to submit listings data to Amazon programmatically. It was launched in 2021 and has been regularly extended with new functionality since then. All these different API sections and notifications, which we will cover in detail shortly, provide a broad set of features that help build best-in-class listings management workflows. A major improvement compared to other listings experiences is that it provides flexibility to adapt to different use cases and scenarios. It is a toolbox with which you can implement the solution that you need. Due to their nature and the way they can be used, we like to refer to these APS sections and notifications as building blocks. Like we will see later, you can freely pick and connect these pieces to create your end-to-end -end listings experience. There are five API building blocks, the product type definitions, the catalog items, the listings items, the listings restrictions, and the feeds APIs. There are also five notification building blocks, one related to new and existing product types, two related to changes to relevant ASINs, and two related to selling partners listing. Let's take a deeper look at each of them. The Product Type Definitions API provides programmatic access to data requirements for the product types in the Amazon catalog. It is the way you can retrieve the attributes and constraints that give shape to products that belong to a specific category. With this API, you will always get the most up-to-date schemas. This means that, for example, when a product type is updated with new attributes, the API will return this information. The schemas provided by the product type definitions API are in JSON format, which facilitates processing. This has also enabled the introduction of rules for mandatory attributes, valid values, and attributes constraints that you can execute before submitting the data. The great thing about using JSON schemas is that there are a number of open source resources available that can be used for data validation and also for UI rendering. So you don't have to spend time implementing that logic, but can leverage the existing resources instead. The Catalog Items API provides programmatic access to information about items in the Amazon catalog. With it, you can query ASINs that belong to the Amazon Marketplace and get the attributes associated to them. The API supports both direct queries, for example, using an ASIN or EAN, and searches using keywords. This way, you can retrieve a specific item if you know the identifiers, or use the API to check if an item exists, find similar products, etc. Something important about this API is the data advance adheres to the JSON schema provided by the Product Type Definitions API. This means that the data that you get in the API response can be used to feed a listing submission. Finally, with its bulk functionality, the API supports use cases and workflows that require access to big amounts of data. And we arrived to what is probably the most relevant building block, the Listings Items API. With it, you can create, update, delete, and retrieve selling partners listings. Use cases like creating variations and back hierarchy relationships are also supported. 
All of this is done in combination with the schemas vended by the product type definitions API. The listings items API supports the submission of full listings data, but it is also possible to submit just product facts or sales terms. This is particularly useful for data validation, since you can create listings that don't go live by specifying product facts only. Additionally, you can decide to send a full payload with all the product's data or do partial updates by submitting only the attributes that you want to change. This is also supported. With the Listings Items API, the feedback mechanisms improved. It provides information about submission errors synchronously. For example, if a mandatory attribute is missing, you get notified by the API response. Issues happening at the matching stage are provided asynchronously using mechanisms like notifications. This helps implement efficient workflows that react to feedback as soon as it's available. Particularly relevant for developers supporting selling partner across different countries or regions is the fact that issue messages are localized, making it simpler to understand them and fix the data. And last but not least, with the listings item API, both seller and vendor use cases are supported, which enables more business opportunities. The listings restrictions API, launched in 2022, provides programmatic access to restrictions on Amazon catalog listings. It's particularly useful to identify if a selling partner is allowed to sell a specific ASIN and to retrieve the steps that they need to execute to get approval if they are currently not allowed. Like we will see later during the workflow implementation overview, integrating this API before submitting new listings items helps prevent issues associated to permissions. Finally, the fifth API building block is the FITS API. This API is not new and also serves use cases other than listings. But with the introduction of the listings item API, it was extended to support the creation, update, and deletion of listings items in bulk. The JSON listing feed used for this purpose is contractually compatible with the format that the product type definitions API bends. So you can basically use the same schemas but submit up to 10,000 items at once instead of doing it one by one. As mentioned earlier, with the introduction of the new sort of listings APIs, five notification building blocks were also launched. These help improve the performance and efficiency of your systems by leveraging messages that are proactively sent by Amazon in real time instead of having to call for data periodically. These notifications provide information about changes to product types, ASINs, and SKUs that are relevant to a selling partner's business. Product type and ASIN notifications will help you take preventive actions like updating a product schema to its latest version in order to populate new attributes. SKU or listings notifications will help you identify issues and status changes as soon as they happen so the selling partner can take the corresponding corrective actions. These notifications are not only triggered after a listing submission, but whenever the status of a listing changes, or if there are new issues associated to it. This way, you can make sure that the selling partner catalog is always healthy. You might be asking how to start receiving these events. This is done by creating an event breach Boss in your AWS account and subscribing your application to them. You can find the detailed steps on how to do it in our public documentation. Overall, the process is simple and takes around 10 minutes. After that, you just need to integrate the events to your product. And that was it for our second episode. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. 
In the description of the video, you will find links to useful resources for the topics we covered today. In our next episode, we will present some of the most common listings use cases and how to implement them using the listings API, including a demo of a reference workflow. Please join us.